don't be fooled, he's in it for money. He's not really in it because he's a big soccer fan. They're all about business. Yeah, I drive around when the owner's Larry Latino. It seems like they go out of their way to try to make themselves look better and, the, and it doesn't work. And they're very good people, good intentions, and uh, they'll just make Liverpool uh, soccer even better. He's ruthless. Who remembers that video then? Do you remember that video? 2012 that was. That was when I was in Boston and uh, I was doing a bit of digging uh, on FSG. I mean, it's almost, uh, what, 10 years ago? No, nine, nine years, not nearly 10 years ago. Um, I was doing a bit of digging, not for info, so to speak, as to like, oh, have you got some dirt on them or anything? No, it was more like, uh, uh, you know, what do the people of Boston, you know, think of them? What do the, you know, what's perceived of them? What do the Red Sox uh, supporters, um, you know, think of them, etc. <clears throat> and those two guys in the in that clip, in that preview clip of that video, uh, were drivers for FSG. Um, it wasn't like, you know, Uber or anything like that. This was the the, the company, if you like, <clears throat> uh, executive company that ferried uh, or ferries uh, FSG uh, partners around and things like that. And I was aware of this, uh, and so I used that company. Um, during the um, <clears throat> the time I was in, uh, in in Boston, I think I was there for a week. I can't remember now; it's so long ago. Um, some of you that you know have watched CopTalk.tv for years will, will remember the video. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so I, I made sure that you know I was their client for the time there, and uh, just wanted to get a bit of um, info about them. Really, and I remember the video. I think the video is titled. It's still on this YouTube channel. Um, can we trust FSG or something like that? <clears throat> anyway, it's um, I don't know if I've told you the date already. I like to put the dates in my video in case some you know auto play or stumbles on the video or something. Uh, Wednesday the twenty first of April twenty twenty one, <clears throat> and you are watching Copter TV. All right, or you are listening um, to the Copter podcast because so I'm actually going to use the audio from this video today on the podcast. To, uh, to save me, you know, saying the same things twice. And sometimes I think, uh, if I then do this video and then go and make the, the, the podcast, I'll go, oh shit, I left that bit out. So I'd rather just do one go of it. <coughs> um, if you want to listen to the podcast, uh, the Cop Talk podcast is on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, any decent podcast app um, will enable you to listen to that. <coughs> Sorry, I don't know, I've got a bit, of a, a bit of a cough going on today. It's not the COVID, I've had the COVID. Um, so, where should we start? So we obviously know what's happened. Last night was brilliant, wasn't it? It was like, um, you know, following it on social media, it was the best uh, football knockout competition ever last night with all these different teams uh, withdrawing or clubs withdrawing from uh, the European Super League. Um, <clears throat> it, was, it was quite funny. I mean, I'm sure Tottenham are probably bringing out uh, a DVD of their, um, you know, their time in uh, the European Super League. Uh, sorry, Tottenham fans. <clears throat> um, so, you know, I remember saying uh, on Twitter last night, at Duncan Oldham is my Twitter account, and at Cop Talk. And I remember saying, um, John Henry, no bloke likes pulling out, but you need, you know, don't be the last one to do so, kind of thing. And we are talking about the football here, John, is what I said, you know, we weren't talking about Linda or anything like that, I'm sure. Anyway, <clears throat> um, because I just thought the longer they leave it, you know, like if we're the last one or one of the last ones in, you know, to pull out people and say you, you only did it because you were, you were forced to. And I just think that the longer it went on, the worse it looked for us. I saw someone say on, on Twitter, some random. Liverpool fan account that I stumbled on. So I don't really follow Liverpool accounts. <clears throat> and they said something like, why, you know, why is it Liverpool, Man United uh, in particular and Arsenal uh, that are getting the most criticism from this European Super League with regards to the English clubs and not so much, you know, Tottenham and, and Man City and things like that. <clears throat> well, the reason that is, is because Liverpool and Manchester United in particular are two of the, the, the world's biggest and greatest football clubs. And um, they're all, they've always been or tried to portray, you know, that they're about the people and community and things like this. And it's all to do with principles. So the modern day fan, and I don't really want to knock anybody's football club, 
<coughs> but the modern day fan would probably say, well, Chelsea don't care about their community and Man City don't, you know, which is quite unfair, really, because I do know, for example, that, that Chelsea, I think it was it Chelsea or was it Tottenham? I think it was Chelsea, actually, um, <coughs> you know, had, had made various accommodation available to, to NHS workers during the, uh, the, the pandemic and everything. And I know we, as football supporters, we've all got our opinions about the fans, really, at these different clubs. <clears throat> but you know the, the most famous clubs, you know Liverpool, Manchester United, uh, even Arsenal as well. Really, when it comes to um, you know back in the day kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> so I don't really want to knock any 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 particular clubs, but no one's really like would consider Manchester City, uh, you know, a great football club. And I don't mean to be disrespectful if that's your you know your team because I think Man City, the you know they've got some great fans, and certainly the ones that supported them through thick and thin <clears throat> and um, you know I'm sure they've attracted a lot of glory hunters and stuff like that these days which is fine that's their business but I just think that you can't put clubs like Liverpool and Manchester United in the same category as Chelsea and Manchester City uh, maybe one day that'll change I don't know but we're historic clubs and I think that's why there was such a you know um, animosity towards Manchester United and Liverpool <coughs> now <coughs> If you're a Manchester United supporter, you're going to be delighted that uh, Woodward's gone. You know, that's every cloud and all that. They'll be delighted about that. Um, I don't really think we have a fall guy at Liverpool at the, at the moment. I can't see anyone getting the boot from there. But <clears throat> from what I understand or what it sounds like, Liverpool and Manchester United and Arsenal uh, were the key you know, people behind this project. They wanted it to happen. You know, the Americans, if you like, the American owners. Um, <clears throat> there's been claims from Chelsea, uh, even Arsenal, actually, whether that's whether you want to believe it or not, but Chelsea and, and Tottenham and these clubs, they're sort of like saying, uh, well, we weren't really pushing for it, but the train was going to go without us, so we had to get involved. Um, <clears throat> whereas Man United and, and Liverpool were the, the key you know, apparently the ones that were trying to make it happen. And I think I read something last night saying they believed that they would make more money in three games uh, in a European Super League than they would do a year of other competition, uh, whether they mean Champions League or not. I don't know, but basically it's all about money, isn't it? No surprises there. <clears throat> and the thing is, we, I think, you know, I mean, I don't like referring to football clubs as a business. I don't like referring to football clubs as a franchise. But that's what it is, really, isn't it? And, you know, we've got to accept, you know, these people come in, they put their money in, and it's up to them if they want to make some money back. That's 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 business. And I don't think anyone's really got a problem with that. I think it was because it then became greed, didn't it? Um, <clears throat> and this is why there was so much outro, uh, outcry about it, because of the, um, you know, the greed aspect of it. And also the... The way that you would be in a league and you know with no relegation you know by default you've got these clubs in there they're not even in the champions league now but think that they're important enough to be in this league and it was just it, it all stunk we all know this right it was just terrible and the fans for the first time ever really i think i've seen collectively came together uh you know fans that hate each other traditionally but you know banter and all that or whatever some of it goes a bit too far I guess but the fans came together and it was uh, it was good to see and I know the fans have been uh, you know uh, highly praised for this and congratulated for it and the Chelsea fans are saying it's all because of them um, <clears throat> but I, I do think the media played a massive part in it as well and also key Commentators in the game, your Gary Neville's, your Jamie Carragher's, you know, um, your Graham Souness, you know, all these different, you can pick your legends and heroes out from all of the different clubs, they all piled in. Um, <clears throat> and, and it was great to see, it was great to see, no doubt about it. And it just shows you that us mere mortals, us, us fucking, you know, nobodies, football fans, we have still got some power. And I hope that football fans now collectively build on this. It's no good having all these different supporters organisations. You need one. You need one and maybe representatives from every club. I don't know how that would work. But, the, you know, you've, you've pulled together 
or we have pulled together with the help of former professionals, former professionals, and even existing, you know, uh, professional footballers, and we've seen our players uh, chip in, Liverpool players, and everything. Um, everyone collectively pulled together that shows you that something can be done when it's not right. Now, the only thing that you know, I will say, which I, and I don't want to, you know, get caught up in, um, you know, coming across as one of these people that uh, that wants to latch on to. I don't want to be, what's the word, virtue signalling, I don't want to be like that. But, you know, like we see racism in football and abuse and out Liverpool players being racially abused and uh, players at other football clubs and on an international level abused. It's just a shame that we couldn't all collectively get together and do that rather than getting down on one knee and all that shite, kicking up a proper fuss and saying it stops now, you know, or else we're not coming into the stadiums anymore. We're not going to buy your products. We're not going to support the game. We're not going to pay for Sky Sports and BT Sports and Amazon and all that shit. So it's just a, it's a little bit. It does bother me like that, you know. Like we all kick off about you know this a league, but we maybe don't show as much, um, you know. Um, <coughs> the resistance isn't the word, you know. Enough anger maybe over certain uh, issues, but I don't want to get into that you know, uh, virtue signalling, like make, trying to make up and trendy and saying the right things and stuff like that because it makes you popular and shite. I don't believe in all that and I think a load of it's a load of shite. Like, I don't like the taking the knee anymore. I just I just think that is virtue signalling bullshit. It, doesn't, it hasn't solved anything, has it? Nothing at all. Uh, but more was solved in 48 hours over this proposed league than they, 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 they will, you know, get all year from doing that. I just think that's a load of bollocks. But that's, I guess, them are topics for another day. <clears throat> I'm being respectful, by the way. I support, you know, Black Lives Matter, the statement. Uh, people will say, well, White Lives Matter too. Well, of course they do. The, the black people are not saying that white lives don't matter. Uh, some people miss that. They don't quite understand that. All lives matter. We know this. Uh, I just don't support the Black Lives Matter movement. I think they're two different things. Uh, I think we had, you know, perfectly good, uh, you know, organisations like Kick It Out, uh, show racism, the red card and stuff like that. I think we already had those that were quite uh, acceptable to try and get this continued message out. Um, <clears throat> the BLM stuff, um, it, I, I find it political. I think, I think it's more political personally. But you know, you might disagree. I mean, I don't know upset you if you uh, if you com if you completely disagree with me. Um, <clears throat> so John Henry comes out today, and he makes this you know, this apology video. Because first of all, they put a tweet out last night, didn't the Liverpool Football Club, which is a disgusting tweet, because it didn't say we're sorry, it didn't mention the fans or anything, and everybody was up in arms. Even people like James Pearce, uh, you know, the hack from the, the athletic former Liverpool <coughs> Echo uh, journalist, someone that many supporters feel uh, don't, you know, not just him, but they feel that many of these journalists don't hold... FSG and the club to account because they're often scared of losing the sources and information and things like that. Yet even people like James Pierce was sticking the boot and going, this is disgusting, you know, this, this isn't an apology. Um, <clears throat> so it was good to see people on side with, with that, how we all felt about that. But then today, it was an inevitable, <clears throat> following the criticism of that statement uh, on, on social media or the official website, wherever, you know, the awful, wherever it was posted, uh, that more would have to come out from the owners uh, would have to make a statement, maybe not the club, because the owners and the club are kind of two different things. So <clears throat> John Henry comes out and says he's sorry, got it wrong. You know, we listen, we listen. How many times have we heard John Henry say, message received, understood, you know, uh, we, we learn. We do. It's like, it's so patronising. And I think that, you know, we all make mistakes in life. I've made loads of mistakes in life from my website over the years. And you do learn as you get older and wiser and dafter. And, <clears throat> but there comes a point when you think, you, you need to think, is that a sincere apology? And it kind of reminded me a bit like when I was a kid, you know, and I maybe did something wrong in the street, maybe kicked a football through someone's window or threw a stone in someone's, you know, stupid little things you do when you're a young lad, when you're with your friends. And you'd get into trouble, you know, and your mum or your, or your dad, probably your mum, because my dad would, poof, my mum would have dragged me down. So you, you're going next door, you're going down there to Margaret's, and you're going to apologise. No, I'm not, I'm not. Yes, you are, because if you don't apologise, you know, I like that. So you, it's one of them scenarios where you're like, all right, Margaret, I'm sorry. 
right? A bit like that, yeah. Or you could even say as in older life and when you're not a kid, I can only speak from a, a guy's point of view, you know, maybe like, you know, you, you've upset your girlfriend, you're like, oh, I'm sorry, but I won't do it again. But yeah, you always, you know, I promise you, I promise you, I won't do it again. I'm listening to you, I've listened to you, honestly. Mm. All right, then, you know. <laughs> And you fucking do it again. You know, you fuck up again. Maybe I'm the only person, I don't know, but I've been in that situation where you're begging for forgiveness. Uh, and with all intent, you know, you, you mean it and you're not going to do it, but you still fuck up, you still make mistakes. So you look at the the, the statement that, that John Henry did, the apology, if you like, and you've got to say to yourself, is it sincere? So when I first look at that, I thought, well, at least he's got the balls to sort of like come out and... Uh, and speak, and I've seen some people uh, say that. Is it sincere, though? You know, he has come out and, and, and spoke to the camera. It's not a written statement. Um, but I would argue that, you know, he hid away and, and, and has forced out, has flushed to come out like a big turd, um, while everyone else at the club, like Jurgen Klopp and the players and everyone and all the fine people at the club, um, you know, came under attack. Uh, and I think if you, I think the Red Sox fans will be raging in America today because they've been trying to flush them out for ages. They've gone to ground over there. I don't know if they've surfaced recently, but I know in the last few weeks I've read articles saying how they can't even be located. They won't be answered questions and this, that, and the other. So they'll see that now. The Red Sox fans will see that and go, oh, here he fucking is, you know. And like, if you watch that video again at the very beginning of, you know, that clip of this video, and just listen to what the guy says, saying, you know, how they try to, you know, portray a certain image, but they're not like that. He said, you the end of the video, he says, ruthless. John Henry's ruthless. And I think John Henry is ruthless. You don't become a billionaire or something like that by being, you know, compassionate and having empathy and, and stuff like that. You just don't. You've got to be a cunt. And that's why most nice people in life have got fuck all. You know, if you're a nasty, scheming bastard, you probably do, you know, done all right. <laughs> you probably have to because of the industries that you're in. I'm not saying that that applies to everyone, but it's just something I've noticed in life that most people that do everything for everybody and are nice people, they're the ones that get shit on and the ones that seem to have all the money tend to be people that are a bit, you know, ruthless. So <clears throat> is it sincere? I don't think it is sincere. I genuinely don't. And it's worrying that some people, I saw some of the comments on YouTube, and it's so different to the comments on Facebook and, and Twitter, say, okay, John, yeah, thanks, John, thanks for that. Thanks for coming out and talking to us. Thanks, John. I won't forgive these people. For me, it's, it's one too many times. You know, we had the furlough carry on with the £77 tickets or whatever they were. You know, constant, constant, constant... Um, apologies and saying we're listening and all that they knew what they were doing they knew what they were doing and it was a cowardly time to do it it was a cowardly time to do it <clears throat> and that's why i think it came out now because there's no fans in the stadiums and they thought the heat wouldn't be on them so much now a few you know keyboard warriors and people on social media is something that you can deal with if you're those people but i don't think they expected the whole media to get on it as well and that's what gave it heightened, you know, um, publicity, if you like, or response, you know, uh, an uprising. So I think they knew the fans wouldn't be happy. What idiot wouldn't know that? You know, but they're not in the stadium, so there'll be no protests, you know. And then you've got club sponsor coming out yesterday or partner saying, well, we're having nothing to do with the club anymore. They wouldn't have expected that. And then you've got the supporters group saying we're taking the flags down. I don't think they'd have expected that. They thought they were going to, you know, get through with it. And do you know what I think as well, guys? I think it's linked to um, the financial fair play news that came out a few weeks ago. Do you remember when it said that they said that um, financial fair play is going to be out, something new is going to come in from UEFA and all that? It's just, I think it's all linked and they've turned around. Because don't, don't forget that the whole financial fair play thing is how uh, FSG run the business. They would never have bought Liverpool Football Club if it hadn't been for financial fair play. So the minute that they think that that's not going to work, they, they, you know, their, their asses are squeaky, you know? So that's, then it becomes more like, well, do you know what? If financial fair play is not going to work, if UEFA aren't going to do that anymore, UEFA will start our own league. Now, we know they've, they've moved this before. We know this, and we know they've tried to do it for negotiating purposes before. 
But I find it very strange that this stuff came out about financial fair play and then this announcement comes out, it's rushed, because it, it felt very rushed. It, it was, you know, like, <clears throat> I've seen people, you know, ordinary lads that have got window cleaning businesses, launch businesses and ideas and stuff like that with more clout and professionalism than this. You know, there was nothing, there was no, you know, where were the, where were the videos or the stuff that, you know, to try and to lure us all in, you know, the presentation, where was everything, just nothing. It just came from nowhere. They'd obviously muted it for years. But it was Liverpool and Manchester United owners, those fuckers, that, you know, that, that I think were the most disrespectful. And I do believe that some of the other clubs are just like, well, we can't be left out, you know. But you don't really want to be defending clubs like Chelsea and Man City and stuff like that. Not that I've got anything wrong with those clubs. I just don't think they fall into the same bracket as, you know, big British, English uh, clubs like Liverpool and Manchester United. You know, if anyone, anyone ever was going to protect the game and the fans, you would expect it to be Liverpool and Manchester United. The clubs, not those owners. You know, we've seen that. We've seen what these people are like. And as far as I'm concerned, these fuckers can be rushed out of town now. I, I'm not falling for it anymore, John. I'm not, I've never fallen for it anyway. I told people day one, you know, when I came back from Boston, what was the one thing that I was told, and I've told you guys for years, they will manage expectations. They will manage expectations to the point where we go, well, you know, we'll be happy with that because, you know, we can't really afford that. And then we'd have to, you know, put prices up. So they manage your expectations. And it's so true. And I don't want to hate on them. You know, I'm sure there could be worse owners. People will be coming out going, care for what you wish for. Now, do you know what? I am willing to take a chance on someone else. Honestly, I really am. And if you're, if you're a Cop Talk VIP member, if you're a member of my website, um, there's something on there today to do with uh, potential interest in the club. You'll have seen it. Go and have a look. It's in the executive lounge. Now, the other thing is, we saw the players come out yesterday, which is all very nice and very romantic. You know, Jordan Henderson, Super Skipper and all that, and Andy Robertson and various other Liverpool players, you know, putting out this statement that we don't support this idea. And that puts them under, you know, the pressure. And I do believe them. I do believe them. I don't think it's fake or anything like that. But what I would argue is these players contribute to this mess as well, you know, with their agents and the demands of the money that they want and the spiralling wages. So, yeah, we might want them to be our heroes and we might want to say, oh, what an amazing captain. Well done for getting people together, Jordan. Brilliant. And that's, that's true. And, and I'm not just seeing the name, him out here, but the clubs wouldn't need to continue looking for more and more and more and more money if they, you know, if 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 they stop paying them more and more and more money, so you know, put the get that under control, get the finances under control, and uh, you know, stop some sort of salary cap, wage cap. I don't know how it works. I'm not really that intelligent enough to come up with these ideas, and I know there's ways around it. But for as long as you keep doing this, you know, and paying this money, they're always going to be scrambling and looking for more money. Now, don't get me wrong, this is all about, this is about greed, you know, this is, a, there's enough money. I'm sick of hearing these, these fucking, these fuckers that were behind this thing say, we were having to come up with new ideas because of the financial, you know, burden of the pandemic. Fuck right off. I've got, listening to John Henry today saying the pandemic over the last year has been terrible for all of us. I'm not having a billionaire tell me how much of a struggle it's been. I'm not, guys. How insulting is that to ordinary people like me and you that ain't got a pot to piss in? You know, this year's killed me personally. And, you know, it's just so insulting to hear that. And I have a wuss. I want these... These I don't have a problem with these people making money. They put their money in. They didn't fucking save us, so don't get me started on that shite. But don't insult me. I mean, that's another thing to actually try and bring this out during a time when everyone's struggling. And, and I mean everyone. You know, we are struggling. We ordinary people are fucking struggling. If I was a billionaire, I mean, they might have bigger bills and responsibilities, but don't put, fucking compare yourself to me, John. Get fucked. You know, and I won't say I was fucking poor, but, you know, I'm not fucking, you know, buzzing right now. I'm not really, you know, in a, in a great position. Um, so the next question is, will they, will they sell up? I think they will sell up. I think they'll go. I think the club's always been for sale anyway, but I think they will sell up. 
I'm 100% convinced on this because they need financial fair play. It, it sounds like that might become a problem. They haven't got their dream uh, of the uh, the European Super League and more money. Um, they might regret not selling the club for two billion when they had a chance. But I genuinely think that's it for FSG. You know, time's up. It's full time for FSG. And uh, one thing I will say is if you become one of these supporters that now falls back into, you know, you've done your protest, you've got your way, and now you turn around and say, thanks for that, John, thanks, thanks for stepping up, you know, and apologise. If you believe that, I don't think you're helping things. I really don't. And I'm not sure that relationship can be repaired. It is like when I was saying, you know, when you apologise to your wife or your girlfriend or whatever, and you've maybe done something wrong, and she's taking you back, and, you know, you can only do that so many times. At some point, she's going to say, look, there has to be a part in the ways it's not working out. And I don't think this is working out. And, I, and, I, and I'm grateful for everything that FSG have done for Liverpool Football Club. But it just goes against everything I believe in, mate. And maybe I am stuck in the past. I don't know. Um, but I know that being stuck in the past as romantic as it may be at times, it's, it's still a good thing, I think. You know, I, like I say, I ain't got a problem with foreign investors. And when I say foreign, I mean people from outside the club, you know, from outside even the game. I, I don't really have a problem with it. If you, as long as you respect everyone, you can't come out and say, oh, we're sorry, you know, we're, we're listening, we'll listen. How many times have you said you'll listen, but not fucking listen? You knew what you were doing. If you cared about the fans, you'd have sat there and they said, what do you think? You know, you spoke to all the groups and said, what's your opinions? They still make the decisions or whatever. But, you know, it's, I find it very condescending and very patronising. And I do not trust John Henry in that video. You might think differently. Maybe you want to move on. Great. I just want to watch football. I don't want to be talking about money. Don't want to be getting stressed out. I'm just glad I've seen more passion in the last couple of days from supporters than I've seen for fucking years. And it's made me think, you know what, maybe our game's not dead. I remember saying to Roy Evans in a bar out here in Spain a few years ago, there was me, my son and Roy, just the three of us in this bar. So it wasn't like the place was packed out with fans. It was a place where you could sit and have a conversation. And I was stood talking to Roy and I said, Roy, it's not the same club anymore, is it? You know, with these American owners, it's not right. And he said to me, and he said, look, son, it is. It's still our club. It's still our club. You know, don't... It might not be, you know, the game's changed, yes, but it's still our club. And that's been proven over the last couple of days. Because despite all their millions, all their billions, we as the supporters of all clubs have made our voice known. And we can do this time and time again with other matters. Racism, VAR, the things we don't like, enough is enough. But unless the fans stick together collectively at all clubs and don't try and do things individually, it won't work. That's what I think, guys. I hope you're all right. I hope you're feeling a bit happier and a bit more, you know, feeling like at least we're not going to go down that route. The game, for many, many years to me, I've felt it's finished. But the last couple of days, it's just given me a little bit of open and then I thought, hey, actually, maybe we have got some fucking clout left. We might only be little people. Well, me not. I'm not a little person. But, you know, collectively, it's a very, very large thing. There's no We've seen with no fans in the stadium what football is. So all clubs, fans of all teams have got to stick together and must never let these fuckers do this sort of thing again. And, and I'll tell you what, don't, don't trust these people. Don't turn around and say, thanks, John. Turn around and say, thanks, John, but fuck off, John. That's what I would say. Thanks, John, but fuck off, John. I welcome your thoughts and opinions. I'll speak to you real soon, guys. Take care.